This is an overview video of AquaData Studio's SQL History and SQL Archive feature. The SQL History window is found under the Query main menu, main menu and it's also an icon on the main toolbar represented here as well. So you can launch the SQL History by clicking on this icon on the main toolbar or Query SQL History. The SQL History and Archive window is one of the most powerful features within AquaData Studio where you can see a history of any SQL statements that you have executed. There are some settings at the top that influence the number of statements that are saved and when they are archived. Um, here you can see I've increased my history to 100 and the max number of statements per entry is 100. That means after I execute my 101st statement, that statement would become archived in the SQL archive. So let's execute some SQL statements and then revisit the SQL history window. So if I open up a query analyzer and just start typing a SQL statement, I have some of the IntelliSense capabilities. Let me select a table and execute that SQL statement. Now if I visit the SQL history under query SQL history, I can see that statement that I just executed. There are a number of other columns displayed as well as the SQL statement column. I can see the date, start and end time, the database platform, even more details on the number of rows selected, the database, also what window within AquaData Studio that SQL statement was executed. And then there's also some other settings here within the main toolbar, such as the preview SQL, that can be very helpful or beneficial. So let's go back to the query analyzer and, and execute another statement or bring in another SQL statement just to see that history start to build. So again, I can choose one or multiple tables from some of my pop-up windows and then execute one or multiple statements and revisit the SQL history. Okay, so here I can execute an individual SQL statement or multiple SQL statements. Now when we visit the SQL history, I can see that history being built for me. So as I mentioned, the number of SQL statements that are saved and the setting there influences that. Um, the archive allows me to form a history where I can search previous saved SQL statements. So here are my current statements in that numbered setting. If I go to the SQL archive, this is a directory that is saving these statements, these archive statements. So here I have some search capabilities where I could search on, say, a keyword and see any database that had a SQL statement with that keyword. Or I could use, say, a start and end time. And so this really allows you to keep an unlimited history of SQL statements. Here you can see you know, thousands and thousands of statements I've executed over time. So there are other settings here that allow you to manage this. Uh, you can select a SQL statement and that would bring that right into the query analyzer for you. Um, so depending on where you left your cursor, you have that capability here. So here I could just select a statement and bring that back into my SQL history, execute an individual statement. Here if I was in, say, some different environments, you'd have the ability to open up you know, one or multiple SQL statements from SQL history. I could multi-select and bring in multiple statements to my SQL history, or just double-click and bring all the statements from a single script into my SQL history. And then there's other settings that would be helpful for you. Um, here you have the ability to compare two different SQL statements, so that might be helpful for you. We're here, let me select, say, a SQL statement from different environments, and now I have the ability to do a copy compare and do a side-by-side -side comparison of two different SQL statements. Right. So lots of benefits here in terms of keeping track of the SQL history, allowing you to preview previously executed SQL, and then the location of these are, are found in the file options where here I can drill into the general history and see where those are being saved to. So there's a history folder and then the archive folder. But those are customizable 
and even shareable if you have other colleagues uh, that need access to the same shared SQL statement directory. Thank you for joining this overview video of Aquadata Studio, SQL History and SQL Archive.